Have you ever purchased a piece of software or a piece of equipment and never really learned how to use it? Perhaps it's a sport, an artistic endeavor, or some hobby where you bought all the stuff and then just stalled out. I've felt that myself recently with some camera equipment and musical equipment that I bought and never really learned how to use. So today I decided to revisit my process of using AI for rapid skill acquisition. In my previous video, which I'll link to now, I cover the details of Tim Ferriss's book, The 4-Hour Chef. In that book, he presents a structured framework for learning any subject fast. Since releasing that video, there have been so many new tools that can be helpful in this area, and also my skills at using these tools has increased quite a bit. So think about it for a second. What have you purchased that you haven't put to use? What have you dreamed of learning that you haven't gotten around to? Because today I'm going to break down my new process for learning any skill at lightning speed. By the end of this video, you're going to know how to build state-of-the-art, interactive coaches and learning companions that can help you take on even the most complex skills. Let's get after it. So here is the new and improved four-step process. It has been streamlined and improved quite a bit from the last video. It starts with deconstruction, moves into selection, sequencing, and the part I'm really excited to show you is the interactive exercises. This all started with our man Tim Ferriss and his book, The 4-Hour Chef, which is a book that focuses on acquiring the skill of cooking, but it's also a framework for learning any skill fast, and I go into depth on this in that last video. But for now, we're going to start with deconstruction, which is breaking down a complex skill into its subtasks. Then we're going to move into selection, which focuses on the most important sub-skills using the Pareto principle, that 80-20 principle that you might be familiar with. Then we look at sequencing as far as which skills we should learn first. And finally, we're going to work directly with the AI and get them to coach us through all of these things in an interactive way, which is brand new for this video. So first I want to show you how to build your curriculums using Claude, especially their new projects and artifacts features, which are really awesome. Then I'm going to show you how to use custom GPT with voice to interact and work through the exercises that we create. Then we're going to go further and I'm going to show you how to use perplexity to gather even more materials and how to organize them and have a handy library of those materials in Notebook LM. So we're going to go through a lot of different tools in a way that will help you learn these new skills faster than ever. If you're new to the Blazing Zebra channel, I want to welcome you and thank you for joining me on my mission of helping everybody I can, including lifelong learners around the world, learn to use these new AI tools. I've got a cheat sheet version of this video and all of the videos I create instantly available to all my Patreon subscribers. I've also got some coaching options in there as well. I'm jumping right into the cheat sheet now. I really went to town on this. There are well over 25 pages that includes everything you need to know about Tim Ferriss's process in this new and improved way. I'm going to start with this deconstruction prompt. This is going to help us break down whatever complex skill we're trying to learn into the most appropriate subskills. I'm dropping this right into Claude. Today we're going to focus on Claude because it's my number one AI tool that I'm using these days. So I'm saying I'd like to learn how to use my Mini Mook Voyager Electric Blue. I want to be sure to add both the make and model of the piece of equipment or whatever software you're using. Make sure to give it details about that. And I'm specifically wanting to use this to create sounds like the ones used by the band LCD Sound System. So I'm asking it to please break this down into its essential sub skills and provide definitions of each. And it is going to town on that. So now I'm moving into the selection phase. Help me understand the 80-20 rule for this and which subskills will give me the best results for the time invested. Dropping that right here into Claude. Now we're moving right on to sequencing. Can you recommend an order to learn these subskills? This way we're stacking one on top of the other. We're grabbing some quick wins and we're building a strong foundation and not just jumping in at random. And here it goes. Telling me to focus on the fundamentals, sound design, envelope shaping, filter modulation, etc. And now we're moving into some of the new and improved example exercise prompts. So I'm going to ask it to please provide simple example exercises for learning each of these subskills. And it has pulled together some example exercises, starting with the fundamentals, moving into sound design. This is pretty awesome, but now I want to have it create some detailed step-by-step -step tutorials for each of these. And that's where this prompt comes in. Provide a detailed step-by-step -step process for the first exercise example. I'm dropping that right in here and it's going really into depth on this first exercise. 
starting with the very basics of turning it off. And I'm just going to do the same exact thing for each of those exercises. Now, previously, I would have loaded all of this into a Google Doc and just printed that out and had that next to me, which you may want to do. But what I'm doing now is turning these into interactive AI coaches, interactive AI collaborators that can walk me through these things. Here's where ChatGPT has some significant advantages. So I loaded in the, all of those example exercise and I created this custom GPT inside of ChatGPT. Here's what that looks like. All you got to do is create a custom GPT, go to this configure tab. You can load in a little uh, image. I've used the Moog icon here, the Moog logo. I've put the name here. I've added a description and then I have added these instructions saying you're a master at using this piece of equipment and you'll be walking students through how to use this. Here's the key. The student will be working primarily in voice mode. So this is how we're going to get some serious interactivity going. So you can please tailor your responses to be short and conversational. Avoid long lists and replies that might inundate the students with too much information. And I just grabbed that artifact where that showed the overview of all of the exercises. I copied that in here and I put in here. Remember, for each exercise, we ha you have detailed information attached in your knowledge base. Those are all loaded in down here. So all of the artifacts that we created using Claude, I have uploaded here. You can do this in any format, whether it's a text document or a uh, PDF or a word. I like to use a text document because it has less formatting that the uh, AI will need to parse through. So I've loaded all of those up in here and I have created this uh, set of instructions. This is all in the cheat sheet if you want to dive deeper. There's a link to this example, custom GPT and those instructions, which you can see here. These are pretty basic, just a couple extra things that will help it work better when it's in voice mode. And from there, you can just turn on voice mode and have it walk you through these exercises. Okay, so here I am in the Mac OS ChatGPT app. This is the app that you need to download, not the web version. I'm gonna interact with this custom GPT I built to help me learn how to use this keyboard. Got to start by hitting these little headphones. Hey, can you help me with exercise number one? Sure. Let's start with exercise one. Here's what you need to do. First, initialize your synth to clear any active patches. Then, in the oscillator bank section, set all three oscillators to sawtooth waves. Set oscillator one to 16 and oscillators two and three to eight. After that, slightly detune oscillator two by turning the fine tuning knob a bit to the right. That's awesome, but can you go into a little more detail about how to reinitialize the keyboard and get straight to a default setting? Of course. To reinitialize the Minimoog Voyager and get it back to its default settings, follow these steps. 1. Power on. Turn on your Minimoog Voyager. 2. Locate the preset button. Find the preset button on the front panel. Awesome, so you can see how we're interacting with this and diving into areas that we need more explanation on. This is really exciting stuff. You can imagine having this fired up on your iPhone and just walking through these different exercises, learning whatever skill you're trying to master. If you know me, you know that I love custom GPTs. So all of those prompts that we went through and more, I've created this learn anything bot that just walks you through all of that. I have a link to this in the cheat sheet. I also have the custom instructions if you want to use this inside of Claude. I'll show you one other example uh, based on this camera that I'm trying to learn how to use. So I'm dropping in really specific information about what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to use the following equipment to help me record my YouTube videos. I'm giving the makes and models and away we go. So now I'm adjusting it a little bit saying I'm really looking to use that DSLR for recording on YouTube. And this is giving me more of what I wanted to see when deconstructing those skills. It's using that 80 20 rule, telling me exactly what I need to be focused on. All I need to say is please proceed. This is so awesome. This would have taken me forever to Google and figure out exactly what I need to be focused on. Now it's putting these in the order that I need to build momentum and get some quick wins. Now we're moving on to the example exercises. Awesome. This gets through everything I needed. I wanted to make sure that it was going to tell me how to use that monitor because that's, I know, critical. And now we can just say move on with step six, creating that uh, detailed exercise very robust. These are very detailed compared to the last video I made just a few months ago. 
All right, I've gone through all five and created the detailed step-by-step -step exercises, and now it's time to just load those into either a Claude project or a custom GPT that I can turn into my interactive AI coach. Now I'm going into ChatGPT, my GPTs, create a GPT, go into this configure tab, don't mess with the create tab. I'm uploading this cool little logo there. I'm dropping in all those instructions. And these instructions are basically that list of example exercises that it created first. You can see those here. And then I introduce it by saying you're the master of the Sony a7 III. You'll be walking students through how to use this to record videos. And I'm just reminding it that it'll be primarily working with students in voice mode. So tailor your responses to be short and conversational. This way you can avoid it just giving you a ton of information every time you interact with it. Now I'm uploading all those files. It's got all the detailed step-by-step -step tutorials in there. I'm going to turn off Dolly. I don't want this creating any images. And I'm going to hit create. Awesome. So just to refresh everything we've gone through up until this point, I showed you how to use prompts to deconstruct a skill, then to use the 80-20 rule to select the different subskills that are most important, then to put those in the right order, and then finally to create example exercises that help you learn each of those skills. Once we had that basic game plan, we created the detailed step-by-step -step guides. Then we loaded those into a custom GPT that you can then interact with as you work through those exercises. But now I want to show you a couple other tricks and tips that I've been doing. I've been using perplexity to find manuals and other valuable resources that I can add to these different custom GPTs or Claude projects. So for that Sony a7 III, for this lens, for this external monitor, and for this microphone, I had it go through and pull and find the actual documentation because some of this may not be in the training data of these AI systems. You may run into problems. So these can be very helpful to add to those knowledge bases. Or alternatively, you can add them to Notebook LM, which is a powerful tool I use all the time for uh, processes just like this. You can see inside of this Notebook LM, this is for my camera rig, I loaded in all of those different uh, manuals. And then I created this briefing document. So you can load these in via PDF. You can copy text in. You can do a lot of different things to upload your source material. And they all appear here on the left. And you want to go down here to the notebook guide at the bottom right. And this you can pull together uh, whatever uh, initial document to go through these. So I like to start with a briefing document. Here's what that looks like gives me this briefing document of everything that's in here so I can get started with these and ask it stuff like, what are some of the best practices for connecting my monitor to my camera? Because that's something I've been struggling with. And it goes through all the things here, ensuring that they're compatible, power everything down, etc. So you've got some uh, really up-to-date factual information loaded in here. And you can load that also into your custom GPTs. Uh, to make sure that you've got accurate information. But it doesn't have to be just manuals that you search for in Perplexity. It could be all sorts of resources that you can gather from the internet and load into your knowledge bases. So think to yourself right now, what are you going to learn? What skill are you going to try to master? What piece of equipment or software have you been dying to learn? And just drop that in the comments. Just one or two words of what you're trying to learn. This does a couple things. First, it puts you on the path to action. You're going to be taking that first step of learning to use that tool, learning whatever skill that is. You're also going to flag me and let me know what you're learning so I can jump in the comments and help you along. I hope you got a ton out of this video and you've learned how to create these interactive AI coaches to help you learn complex skills. Again, thanks for tuning in to Blazing Zebra. I've got that cheat sheet along with over 90 others that are instantly available to anybody that supports me on Patreon. I've got some coaching options in there, but other than that, thanks so much for watching. And please, if you haven't already, subscribe. There are many people watching this who are not subscribed, so I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. Uh, give me a thumbs up and tune in for the next video. Make your dreams come true.